Hey CJ, guys here, and today in this video we're going to add NBT to our block as we did our item in here. It's a little more complicated and a little more annoying, but yeah, yeah it works. So what we've got to do is first create a new package. We're going to call this tile. Now to add MBT to a block we have to create a tile entity which is basically like an instance of the block that's currently in the world. You don't have to do this for items. So inside of our tile package I'm going to create tile entity tutorial. We're going to want to make sure that this extends tile entity and import that and that's good. So then we're going to want to go into our common proxies pre in it. And I'm going to say, well, actually, let's create another class in tile. I'm going to call this underscore tiles. And in here, we're going to have a public static final void common pre in it. And we're going to say inside of this method game registry dot register tile entity. I spelled that wrong. No, I didn't. Register tile entity, tile entity tutorial dot class, and then I'm just gonna say it's tile under or tile entity underscore tutorial as the resource name. Okay, so back in here, I'm going to go after blocks, and I'm gonna say tiles dot common pre in it. Actually, I'm gonna put this before blocks because I can. Okay, so back in our block class, we're gonna want to make sure this implements i tile entity provider. I want to import this and you'll have to add a new method. Create new tile entity. So this is the world. This is some data. Okay, and we're going to return a new tile entity tutorial. Okay, so we can close the block class and the main tutorial mod and we're ready. So inside of our tile entity, we're going to have a private int clicks. I'm going to set this equal to zero by default. So because this is a tile entity and it's unique for each and every block, you can go ahead and create a non-static variable. You cannot do this in items and don't do it in your item class. If you do, every item gets that variable, which isn't what you want. Okay, so first things first, public nbt tag compound write to nbt, nbt tag compound, and this is just the nbt. So what you do is super dot write to nbt, and the nbt, and then, well actually you have to return that. And before this, you say nbt, oh wait, uh, if nbt is equal to null, nbt equals new nbt tag compound, and we say nbt.set integer we'll call it clicks and we'll just set it to this.clicks because it's a non-static variable you can use this okay so this method is automatically called by the game if you see the green arrow you typed it right and basically all this does is it adds our clicks to the nbt tag compound and actually creates the compound if for some reason it's not there now we need to set up the method that reads it into the clicks variable. So this is read from nbt. And once again, we have our npd tag compound nbt. And we say if nbt, or if not nbt equals null, oh, whoops. If nbt is not equal to null and nbt.has key clicks, this.clicks equals the uh, nbt dot get integer clicks. So this one's a lot easier. You're also probably going to want to call super dot read from nbt as well. Okay, now I'm going to add two more methods. I'm going to add a set clicks and a get clicks method so that we can access the clicks variable from outside. So public void set clicks int clicks. This dot clicks equals clicks and a public int get clicks return this dot clicks so now inside of our block we're going to add an on right click method now the blocks on right click method is a lot more fun you'll love it 
It's public boolean on block activated. And first we have the world, the position of the block, the state of the block, we'll get into those later, the player, the hand, which way we're facing, and an x, y, and z coordinate for all of that. And then for this, we'll just return true when it's right clicked on. Okay, so I'm going to shorten some of these that we won't be accessing, at least for now. Actually, I'll shorten everything because I'll make player PLY, I'll make state ST, block pause, BP, enum hand, age, facing. Okay, there we go. So now we have to access the tile entity. So we're going to get our instance of tile entity so we can access this through the world, through get tile entity and BP for our current position. Now we say if TE is not equal to null and TE is an instance of our tile entity. Then we can get a tile entity tutorial TE T equals tile and entity tutorial of TE. Now we say player, let's say if they're sneaking. We're going to send them a new text component string. And we're just going to say number of clicks. And that is going to be tet.get clicks. Else, if they're not sneaking, let's actually shorten this a bit because we can. Well, say tet.set clicks, tet.get clicks plus one. Now back inside of here, I forgot, when we set our clicks, we're going to want to mark this as dirty. So the game goes ahead and calls this and saves it to the NBT and such. Oh, and I almost forgot, we're going to want to make sure the world is not remote. Once again, we want this only to run on the server. If the world is remote, it is being run on the client. And since this data is stored on the server, we don't want that. Okay, game launches, no errors, that's great. Now let's test. Okay, so we just give ourselves our tutorial block. We place it, we shift right click, zero clicks, right click, shift right click. So let's right click a few times, that's seven clicks. We should be able to leave the game and rejoin it. If we shift right click, we still have seven clicks. So that is how you read and write NBT from a block. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you enjoy my content, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, next tutorial, I think we'll be doing creative tabs. Gnarly.